I meet a new home. I live and work in London, but I travel quite a lot. I've been involved in children's rights advocacy, mostly with NGOs, sometimes working a bit with UNICEF for a long, long time. I'm quite old, as you can see. And uh, I have got sort of stuck, in a way, with this particular issue of trying to end corporal punishment, violent punishment of children. It's a campaign both in my own country, the UK, where parents are still allowed to smack, as we call it, their children. Uh, but it's also now a global movement we're trying to insist on children's right to have all violent punishment prohibited and eliminated in every country of the world. Um, thank you. Um, first, I would like to ask, what is corporal punishment? It's a good question. And usually when people ask it, uh, it's because they want to approve of some level of violence against children. The best definition probably is that provided by the Committee on the Rights of the Child, which is any use of force which causes some degree of pain or discomfort to a child, however light, as a punishment. So basically we all agree that hitting people or hurting people deliberately is wrong. But when it comes to children, in most, still most countries of the world, the law makes an exception and says it's okay to hit and hurt children deliberately if you disguise it as discipline or control. You pretend that then it becomes different and acceptable. So really, banning corporal punishment is giving children the same protection as adults have from being deliberately hit or hurt. Are you saying that uh, there, at the moment, is discrimination against children because of just their status as a child? Um, so, with with this uh, ban on corporal punishment, that this discrimination is going to be eliminated. This this discrimination is going to be ended. Yes, it's a, it's an issue of equality and human rights. Uh, if you go back a hundred years or less, in some countries there was still a legal right on husbands or partners to hit or hurt their wives. Now every country in the world has made violence against women illegal. There's still too much of it, but nowhere is it still legal. And children are now the only people who can lawfully be hit and hurt deliberately in the family home and also often in many countries in schools, in care institutions, penal systems and so on. So um, you've been working on this subject for quite some time as you pointed out. Um, um, is, is it taking too long to achieve this and why is this? It's taking far too long from a children's perspective it's completely illogical that children should be the last people to be given this basic equal protection from deliberate assault. You would think it would happen the other way around, that we would first give protection to the smallest and most vulnerable people. And an awful lot of babies and tiny children get hit by their parents. It's, it's almost automatic still in many countries to assume that it's okay, it's traditional, it's what parents suffered, so they use the same methods still. So it is taking far too long. And the basic reason is, well, we now have a consensus against the extreme forms of violence against children, sexual exploitation, trafficking and so on. Everyone condemns those because those things are done by other bad people. When it comes to corporal punishment, it's a personal issue which affects almost everyone. Almost everyone was hit as a child. Most parents have hit their own children. 
and it's that personal dimension that particularly makes it difficult to move on and see it as a basic issue of human rights and equality. So um, you also mentioned that this is a human rights imperative uh, and we know that uh, human rights are being guaranteed in international law and national laws. Um, what are the uh, guarantees against uh, corporal punishment of children? Legal, legal rights of children being free from well, corporal punishment? Uh, I mean, all the, all the core human rights instruments protect the right to respect for your human dignity and physical integrity. And you'd think that that would be enough because that basically is what this is invading. And then the Convention on the Rights of the Child came along and while it doesn't specifically mention corporal punishment, it gives states an obligation to prohibit all forms of violence. And when the Committee on the Rights of the Child started to examine state reports almost 20 years ago, very early on they interpreted the Convention and Article 19, the obligation to protect from all forms of violence as including corporal punishment. How could they have come to any other decision? So for almost 20 years the Committee has been telling states they have this obligation they produced a general comment, which is an authoritative statement of their interpretation of the Convention, saying it's an immediate obligation. Some of the other human rights treaty bodies, like the Committee Against Torture and so on, have also started to systematically condemn all corporal punishment, including in the home. And in Europe, of course, we have the European Court which through a series of judgments has condemned corporal punishment in all settings, although when it came to the home they have not quite yet produced a judgment that forces countries to completely ban it, but they will. When children take a case again to the court, I'm quite sure that will happen. The Council of Europe has become the first intergovernmental body with 47 states to campaign explicitly for a universal ban across Europe. There is a global human rights consensus now, but the frustrating thing is that because it's such an unpopular issue with the public, because it's such a personal issue, governments are not simply getting these recommendations and quickly deciding we've got a ban corporal punishment. They don't like doing things which are not popular with voters. And so in some cases, my country, the UK, has received three successive recommendations from the Committee on the Rights of the Child that it must ban all corporal punishment, and it's not acting. Uh, what's the uh, progress so far that you say that there is a campaign for the last three years by the Council of Europe uh, for all 47 uh, members of the Council of Europe, including Turkey. Yeah. What's the progress? So far, 23 of the 47 member states of the Council have completely banned corporal punishment, including in the home, and another six or seven have very publicly said that they will do it very soon. In one or two cases, the legislation is already before Parliament. So we're about halfway there in terms of numbers of states across the Council of Europe. I worry because I think there was a momentum. We had the United Nations study on violence against children, which reported to the General Assembly in uh, 2000 and in 2005. It created a big momentum, it recommended complete prohibition. Uh, that momentum is in danger of slowing down unless there is very strong advocacy. Of course it would be great if children themselves began to campaign for this. I think it is again, it's because it's such a personal experience for most children 
it's not easy for them. If you ask young children, they tend to say that they are very, you know, if you get them in a situation where they feel they can speak, they usually say that they are very upset by the fact that people, their parents, people they love and respect, are using violence and pretending that it's not violence. But sometimes older children inevitably begin to absorb their parents' attitudes to this, so you don't always get a condemnation from young people. Uh, and of course it is adults' responsibility to advocate for this. It's us who are perpetrating this violence, and we should be now saying, of course, it's ending it is long, long overdue. What, what sort of legal reform is uh, needed for, for ending corporal punishment? When you're trying to end something which is traditionally completely accepted, then the main thing is that the message of the law is completely clear, unambiguous, not confusing. In Turkey there is still clearly legal confusion about the situation in the schools, in alternative care institutions and in the home. And there is not a clear belief that corporal punishment is prohibited in those settings at all. And of course Turkey is not alone, that's true of quite a significant number of other countries in Europe. So the purpose of law reform is first of all to achieve children's equal right to protection from all assault, whether or not it's disguised as punishment or discipline or control. The purpose, the particular purpose of the message of the law is of course to stop it happening because prosecution, many people think the law is there in order to prosecute and punish criminals and ultimately that's very important too. But for children prosecution is too late, by then they've been assaulted. What we want is a law that is used more powerfully to prevent and what the law does once it's in place is to allow all those who are working with children and families around them to deliver this completely clear message that it's no more lawful or acceptable to hit a child than to hit anyone else. And that message, if it's linked to promotion of other ways of positively relating to children, uh, positive teacher training, positive parent education and so on, then that will quickly change attitudes. It's not going to help children to prosecute hundreds of parents for small smacks or slaps of their children. That's not the point and it won't happen because adults don't get prosecuted for little assaults on other adults. The fundamental purpose is educational, but equally it has to be a strong law so that people can see that children have this equal protection. Would you like to make any uh, concluding remarks? Well, obviously I hope that this the campaign to give children equal protection to end the acceptability of corporal punishment will be successful soon in Turkey. I think your government has made very strong commitments. Uh, for instance, quite recently it answered a recommendation in the Universal Periodic Review in Geneva saying that this was either happening or would happen soon. So let's hope for very quick progress here. And of course I hope for it in my own country, the United Kingdom too. Thank you. And what would you like to say to uh, NGOs that are working in uh, Turkey for the protection of children's rights, children, children's well-being and uh, violence against children? I think you need to see this particular issue as having particular importance, not simply as a child protection issue, although many children are injured and some children die because of corporal punishment 
but it's a fundamental issue about children's status and as rights holders, not as possessions of their parents. And I think if we win this issue, it does release the potential for much more true respect for children. Thank you, Ken, for contributing to our channel and uh, have a good stay in Turkey. Thank, Thank you. you.